proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart. Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark with his backyard forecast and Joe Zone on sports. This is the News Watch 16 update. A jury in Texas says Ford Motor Company is guilty of gross negligence in designing the 1974 Mustang II. It has awarded $106 million to the family of a woman killed in the flaming wreck of a Mustang II after it was hit from behind. The 74 Mustang had burst into flames. Ford has not decided whether it'll appeal. In Tannersville tonight, the test results are back. They show there is asbestos residue in a school's classrooms. Newswatch 16 was the first to tell you last month about parents concerned that asbestos in classroom 13 at the Pocono Elementary School. Scientific tests now show small levels of airborne asbestos in the school and inside a school bus that was used to haul away some asbestos. Those levels are believed to be safe. College officials all over the country have all eyes turned toward a survey done by U.S. News & World Report. The magazine has ranked the top colleges and universities. Two of those mentioned are right here in northeastern and central Pennsylvania. The University of Scranton is acknowledged for doing a noteworthy job of educating students. The magazine says the school has extraordinary success in that it has a high number of students receiving Fulbright fellowships to study abroad. Bucknell University out in Union County is ranked as one of the best liberal arts colleges in our country. Newswatch 16's Craig Stevens went to Bucknell today to find out why. A survey among college presidents found Bucknell to rank number one in its class this side of the Mississippi. Perhaps part of the reason is programs like this one. Dr. Warren Abrahamson working one-on-one -on -one with student Heidi Hollenbach on a research project. Once inside, they collaborate on work funded by the National Science Foundation. They both think this one-on-one -on -one teaching is something few other colleges or universities offer in an accredited course. It really does allow for the student and the faculty to get to know each other very well and to work very, very closely with a particular project. Uh, in most cases, it involves some project the faculty members particularly uh, uh, expert in, and this allows the student uh, access to a good deal of, of personal attention. I feel that I've learned not only how to conduct research projects, but also the workings of the scientific community. Not all of Bucknell's students get such individual attention, but for the $42,000 they'll spend for a degree, they're getting what others have ranked one of the best educations available. The one-on-one -on -one learning that's underway here at Bucknell is just one of many programs that help rank the university among the best in the nation, according to U.S. News & World Report. And it's likely that this type of learning, along with the other programs, will continue for quite some time. Craig Stevens, Newswatch 16, Lewisburg. Still ahead, we'll show you some furniture that's really out of this world. But first, Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark will be going out to the backyard. What will it be like, Tom? Well, uh, okay now, Good. out in the backyard. More like the middle of October this afternoon, and I have more mild temperatures in my forecast, along with some rain. And we'll get to those details when we come back. Everything you want to know about outdoor life, Saturday. Thanksgiving is on the minds of most of us this week, but in Wilkes-Barre, the Christmas season is kicking off. Today, city workers were busy streaming lights on Wilkes-Barre's Christmas tree here on Public Square. It stands 35 feet tall and was donated by Mrs. Harold Koblish of Wilkes-Barre. When the mayor pulls the switch on the giant tree tomorrow night, some 200 lights will add a warm glow to this holiday season. Mm, Great. That warm glow is in the forecast, I <laughs> think, Yeah, too. I think so. Yeah. We'll find out about that in a few seconds, right, Tom? We sure will, Nolan. Uh, did you get my gift yet, by the way? Uh, no. What oh. about me? Oh, I'll get yours, Karen. Okay. All right. All right. Christmas season is upon us, I guess. Uh, so is Thanksgiving. And we'll have that forecast in just a moment. Hey, not bad outside tonight. Crystal clear skies overhead. Not too hot, not too cold, just about right with a heavy coat on. The moon is out overhead. Let me show you the temperature down on the ground in this backyard now. It's dropping very, very slowly, 46 degrees on the old thermometer. The humidity is 60%. The wind north at 6 miles per hour. The barometer continues to rise now above 30 inches. The high today, look at that, 60 degrees. Uh, 12 degrees shy of the record high for this date, however, set back in 1931. The normal high is only 45. 
The low last night was 45 degrees. The normal low is freezing. Record low for this date set back in 1969. That silhouette of a church out there, uh, you see, is just outside of Clark Summit in uh, Lackawanna County. That shot at sunset this evening, a crystal clear atmosphere. Take a look at the view from 22,000 miles in space. A lot of warm air over the eastern seaboard, but a lot of cold air and snow out in the far west. You've heard about it. Here it is right here, a very strong temperature boundary. You go from 70s to 30s and 40s in a matter of a few hundred miles along this boundary line here. And there's a very intense storm moving northward across the nation's midsection tonight. In the wake of that storm, well, very good news for the ski industry out in Colorado and some of the best opening conditions they've ever seen. Right now in Vail, the Vail Ski Resort in Colorado, 43 inches of snow on the slopes now. Also now up in uh, Wyoming, it is five below zero in Laramie. Very cold air up that way. And this temperature boundary is moving east. Out ahead of it, very warm air. Look at these lines here, very intense thunderstorms, hail, even some uh, tornadoes have been reported in some of the uh, counties of Oklahoma and Missouri. And as we track that storm system northeastward towards the Great Lakes, we will stay in the warm air for the next couple of days. But as this boundary moves across Pennsylvania on Thanksgiving, a lot of clouds and some rain, then some colder air coming on Friday. So here we go for tonight. It looks like this, plenty of moonlight overhead. A few clouds could streak in over the southern counties, but it'll stay dry tonight. And the low by morning in Forest City, I project to be about 36 degrees. How about Glen Lyon? 37 year low tonight. Down in Northampton, just north of Allentown in Northampton County, 40 degrees for the morning low. 39 in Danville and 38 out there in Faxon. Here's tomorrow's weather picture. I see some sunshine a good part of the morning and midday hours. It'll stay mild too. Look at these highs, near 60, about 64 in Tremont and Scoop Hill County, 61 in Pringle. But watch out for some rain late in the day in the form of a couple of showers, probably uh, after 4 o'clock, as I see it now, into tomorrow evening. A southeast wind at about 15 miles per hour. Take a look at that health watch. Well, hey, <laughs> nice and warm outside. Indian summer temperatures may be a, a bit of a distraction for you, so your concentration may be a little bit low in the afternoon. Clear tonight, 37 degrees, increasingly cloudy tomorrow, 61 in Wilkes-Barre, Scranton. I love it. A shower possible late in the day or tomorrow evening. The wind will pick up as well. We're looking for some rain showers on Thanksgiving, 60 degrees, but then colder air comes in Thursday night and Friday, only about 43 on Friday, cloudy on Saturday. So, uh, hey, one more pretty nice day, mm -hmm. then the rain comes in, mm -hmm. still mild on Thanksgiving, near 60, and then the cold air. <laughs> Oh, right. well, it's got to come sooner or later, right? That's right. It, we'll it, enjoy it. In. Yep. Thank, Thank you, Tom. Tom. Still ahead, how you can turn your dog into dollars. Plus, an Eastern Conference playoff preview and the University of Scranton back in action. Joe Zone in sports next. You ought to get out this fall and tour a United Way member agency in your community. From the very young to the very old, United Way serves thousands of your friends and neighbors each year. Visit an agency and see your United Way contribution at work and give generously cause. Thanks to you, it works for all of us. The United Way. Call your United Way today. Did you ever enter your dog in a contest or show to see if it could win a ribbon as the cutest canine in town? Well, a dog owner from Michigan did just that and her prize-winning pooch won her $25,000. This one-year-old English Springer Spaniel is the nation's top dog. His name is Trapper, and he won the Great American Dog Contest in New York. In Heather Schaefer's essay about her best friend, she wrote, Trapper loves to eat ice cream, especially with a spoon. Uh-huh. Hmm. Hey, what do you think of that, Jim? I told my wife to keep that Springer Spaniel, but she wouldn't uh, listen to me. $25,000. They love to eat ice cream. Had a Springer Spaniel. Furniture and <laughs> everything. <laughs> right. I told her, there we go, $10,000 dog right down the tube. So we have the week. Sure. <laughs> Big discussion tonight in the Zone family. Tell University of Scranton basketball, what do you say? Time to get back rolling, right? Big crowd, lots of excitement. Even a new mascot for the Royals as they open up the defense of their national championship. A little nervousness, a few jitters maybe early as the Royals opened at home tonight against their sinus. Let's go and check those highlights. 
You'll recognize some of those guys from last year, like Mickey Benes, he had two. Bain has had a terrific night, considering he sat down a lot of the time as the Royals move up a big lead. Little alley-oop, bigger saw Palachek to Beswar. And now watch the alley-oop again. Inside to Mickey Benes, he finished with 21. And Palachek on the receiving end right here. Good for a three-point play. Our sinus was there, but only for a while. As Scranton pulled away through the first half, they go on to win by 32. Jeff Jones finished with 21 rebounds. Let's go to the scoreboard. University of Scranton, 84 in their opener. Ursinus is 52. Shepherd College over Baptist Bible tonight. Let's go to the NBA and see the scores there. Philadelphia 112, Detroit 108. New York beat Boston 96-92. Golden State over Washington by a point. Atlanta beat Indiana. Houston beat Phoenix 118 to 96. Well, the Eastern Conference Class C title will be decided Saturday afternoon. Will it be Mahanoy area or Southern Columbia? The battle for the Eastern Conference C title will match two bruising defenses and two potent offenses. The two teams have relied heavily on their running games to get them where they are. Mahanoy area head coach Bill Fazio thinks that Southern Columbia's size might force a change in his game plan. You just can't run at them all day. You have to come up with something, uh, something not necessarily new, but something different, something they're not expecting at that particular time. The Tigers have used their size advantage to dominate teams during their 10-1 regular season and again last week against Bishop O'Hara. But Coach Andy Ulichny says that size may not play a role at all. Monoy has the size to go with us. We had a tremendous size advantage against Bishop O'Hara, and Monoy has some big tackles and really mean linebackers. I think that's going to neutralize some of the advantage that we did have going into the O'Hara game. Two great seasons will end on Saturday. The difference being, however, one team will go home as the Eastern Conference C champion. Also on Saturday, the Class B semifinal between Scranton Prep and Hanover area. We'll look at that one tomorrow night, 11 o'clock. And don't forget our exclusive football coverage Thanksgiving morning, East Stroudsburg versus Stroudsburg, and a week Saturday, the Eastern Conference Class A title game. Both games live and exclusive right here on 16. Well, if you ask the Bears, probably not, but the Pennsylvania Game Commission says, yeah, the season's two-day hunt was a huge success. Final total still not all in, but with yesterday's thousand and another few hundred harvested today, the bear season was right on target. When all the numbers are in, it'll add to the record, which was set yesterday. Took a year, but Sugar Ray Leonard is apparently itchy to get back into the ring. He's going to fight an exhibition for his brother. I don't know exactly who's feature on the card yet, but I will do uh, an exhibition, uh, basically to help out the show and I guess give people another opportunity to see me in the ring. He does not say, however, that he is coming back into the ring for the real thing. National Hockey League tonight, the Islanders beat Quebec, Montreal also won their game. Rod Carew has signed a new two-year contract with the California Angels. No one you'll remember selected Carew in the free agent draft. It looks like he'll get about what he made last year, a measly million, 100,000. Fishing game forecast for tomorrow. <laughs> Excellent. Boy, they like to grab your eye, don't they? Those fish aren't stupid. 4.30 and then a lot of little peaks along the way. And 7.30. Was it ten thousand dollars that Springer Spaniel won? Yeah, right Twenty-five thousand. Plus a year supply of dog food too. I forgot mm -hmm. to mention that. You might be able to get it back, huh? The yeah, I think it went to a good family. A good family. Well, that's all that counts. Yeah. Oh, boy. Thank you, Joe. Okay. That, my friends, is our report for tonight. Next on Nightline, the crisis game: what America's leaders would do if there were an actual nuclear attack. It's something you might not want to miss. For the first news of the day, don't miss Frank Andrews, Dorothy Lucy, meteorologist Noreen. Clark and Jay Christopher with sports for News Watch 16 this morning. That's at 6.30 again at 12 noon. For the update team, good night. Good night.